Hey everyone, welcome to another of my quick Avid tutorials. And the topic today is the timeline. That's this tool down here. We normally call it a window, but in official Avid parlance, it's a tool. You can find it in the tools menu right here under timeline. And this is where you're building your edit. This is something we all use a lot, but there are certain things that sometimes people can't figure out intuitively. I get questions from students, or these are some comments too that have popped up on some of my other tutorials where people can't quite figure out how to do something. And so I just wanna walk you through a couple of quick tips that Hopefully you're already aware of a lot of these, but uh, maybe there'll be something new that helps you out. Or if you're looking for a specific question, hopefully it's here. So the simplest thing, and one that I've gotten a couple times on comments on tutorials, is just sort of moving through the timeline like this. So you can see if I'm just clicking on my mouse and dragging here, it is scrolling wherever I want to go. And people have said, my behavior isn't like that. It's doing things differently. There's a couple different ways that this can change or happen, but the simplest one is if you have one of your segment modes turned on over here. So if I have either my insert mode or my overwrite mode turned on, you'll notice now if I go down here, instead of being the cursor, it's turning into this arrow. So you can see it's that, whereas if I turn those off, now it's back to the regular cursor and I can click around. If I turn one of those on, now it's this. And now when I click, you'll see it highlights a clip. And if I try to drag it, it's dragging that clip instead of just moving the cursor, which is what I wanted to do, or moving the playhead as we call it. So that's the most obvious one I would say to check is if you wanna be able to just click down here, just make sure that you have all your segment modes turned off. There's the insert mode like this with the yellow arrow. There's the overwrite one with the red arrow, or there is this one with the red and yellow, where they are both active at the same time. Hopefully you're aware of these, but just as a quick demo, if I have the overwrite one, and let's say I take this clip and I just sort of drag it over here, it's just gonna drop it on top of whatever was there. Some of this footage disappeared and it left me a big gap here. If I have the insert one, it's going to shuffle things around. So if I move this forward, you can see what it actually did was this clip that was after it, which I apologize, this is just a demo session. These aren't named anything interesting, but this clip that was 7353 at the end here, the one that I'm moving is 7355. So when I move it here, it took the first part of 7353 and put it at the beginning, then it dropped this in the middle and left the rest of 7353 at the end. So insert mode is gonna keep your overall timeline length the same. It's not gonna get rid of any footage out of your timeline. It's just kind of shuffling things around. So the kind of most obvious thing you might want to do with this is to like take this and put it between. This clip was at the beginning and now I've shuffled it to between those other two clips. So you can see it started here and then I'm putting it here and it's between the two. So that's insert mode. There's overwrite mode as I could just drag it and drop it there. And so those are handy if you're gonna be dragging stuff around, but if any of them is turned on, when I click anywhere in here on an actual clip or actually also on filler, because remember in Avid, the sort of thing that looks like empty space is actually a clip, it's a clip called filler, then it's gonna move that instead. So I can just turn these off. I have these mapped to the E and R buttons on my keyboard. So E is to turn on and off my insert, R is turn on and off my overwrite. And so I can toggle those both off and now I can sort of drag through here. I have them both on, so you can see here I have the red and yellow arrow saying it's both modes are active. You can see just from moving my cursor, if I grab a clip on the top half of it, it's grabbing it in an overwrite mode. If I grab on the bottom half, it's grabbing it in an insert mode and shuffling things around. So if you're good with your mouse and can remember to be on the top or bottom, and it does, the indicator does change, you can see to show you which you're in, then that's a good option for you. I usually I'm not worried about being that precise with my mouse. I try not to drag things around a whole bunch anyway. I like to use my keyboard. So I usually just turn on one or the other at a time, whichever one I happen to be needing. But let's say I wanna leave that on. You know, I wanna have this on to be able to move some things around. I don't wanna have to turn it off every time that I'm just trying to move my playhead. There's two places you can always go that will work. So one is up at the very top here where I have this sort of time code laid out and it's showing me the time code for my sequence. You can say, always grab up there and move this. And the other place is kind of the same thing you have this time code track here, depending on your display and setup and interests, you can set up multiple time code tracks showing up if you want. Um, but wherever those are, I can always click in there and drag through this way. And if I want a little more space there, I can go to the bottom of this track. I'm gonna hold down option on a Mac and I can drag this down and make that taller and give myself kind of bigger space to go in here and drag things if I feel so inclined. And that looks ridiculous to me, so I'm gonna pull that back down. You can also shuffle these, so I could like take this and put it down here at the bottom. And again, I held down option to do that. So holding down option, you'll see it turns into this finger and I can move this around wherever I want it to be. And if I'm at the bottom of a track, then it turns into this height thing. And that's the same for all these, by the way. If for some reason I want A3 below A4, I can do that. 
that's how to move your cursor through, which again, seems like a really simple, straightforward thing, but it's something that occasionally hangs people up if they have these modes on and are not aware of it. One other thing I'll note is you do have this sort of empty gray space around here. I might want to click there and try to move the cursor and it's not doing that. What I can do up here is draw boxes around things. So if I wanted to, you know, highlight a bunch of clips like that, I can do that. Or if I want to highlight those, you will. And the way this is set up here is if I drag to the right, it's going to grab stuff. So if I go like this and I'm dragging to the right, it's grabbing that clip that was entirely within that. And just to show you if I had a little more space here, you'll see it can grab filler. It's going to grab any clips that are entirely enclosed within the box. If on the other hand, I go to the left, so let's say I do the same size of things and I move backwards. So I'm drawing my box to the left instead of to the right. It's going to put me into trim mode. And so it's going to say, we're, again, think about whatever stuff was completely inside that box. So in this case, it's the same, this clip here and this filler here. It's going to put me into trim mode with one side of the trim at the beginning of that and the other side at the end of that. I'll be honest, this is a function I almost never use. If I want to do this kind of trimming, I usually do it a different way, but it is a way to activate that. And this is, for those of you familiar with the old Final Cut lingo, this would be like a slip or slide edit where this section is going to stay in the same place because I'm not changing the clips before or after, just kind of changing which parts of these clips I'm doing. So just to show you if I sort of trim forward a bit, you can see what it's doing is it's moving this cut forward. So it's trimming off the beginning of this shot, but moving this one also forward. So adding to the end of this shot, if I go back the other way, it's going to do that in reverse. So you can see the end and start of that section still stay at the same place. It's just adjusting where they start and end. Okay. So that's some basic timeline functions. One other thing, since we're talking about dragging that is in my basics tutorial, but in case you missed it is this section here, which is a link selection toggle. So this means when I like click on something, by default, does it select all the stuff that is synced with that? So you can see if I grab this clip, it's going to move the whole thing. Or if I turn that off, and again, I have this map to my keyboard. On my keyboard, it's semicolon. Now if I click on this, it's just going to grab one of these tracks and move them separately. This is one of those ways, uh, and there's a few of them in Avid, where it's easy to get things out of sync if you're not paying attention. So you may want, if you're worried about that, by default to leave this turned on so that when you grab a clip, it's always going to try to grab all the things that were in sync with that. But sometimes you need to get things out of sync or I want to just do something with part of this and say, hey, I want to take this piece of audio here and actually want to lay it under here without moving this video and leave where it is. So you can do things like that very easily with that. Okay, I wanted to keep this a quick tutorial, so I'm not gonna go through a whole bunch of other things right on here. One thing I did want to show you though is some timeline options. So if I go into my settings, command comma on Mac. I've talked before, I love the Avid settings, the way it breaks things up with the format, project, user, and site, so that different settings are tied to what they kind of make sense to be. So, you know, things that are specific to this project are tied to the project, things that relate to kind of the interface and how I use it are tied to the user, and things that have to do with the hardware setup, things that I don't want to change from project to project or user to user, because they have to do with the specific configuration of my computer and other things I might be connected to are site settings. In this case, let me go to the user settings and you'll see there's a whole ton of these. Most of your settings actually are user settings. If you kind of look through these, that's where most of the options are because most of these are configurable having to do with the interface and just how you're working with it. And I'm going to click on the timeline here and bring up my timeline options. And there's two tabs at the top here, display and edit. And I'm not going to go through all these. You can look through them to kind of see what some of these options are. The display one, not surprisingly, has to do with how things are displayed, how they show up in the timeline, and when you're moving things, what happens. So you can see here, display during segment drags. So if I'm doing what we were just doing and I'm dragging clips, what is happening to the display up in the composer here? How does that work? Just to kind of show you that, right now when I'm grabbing a clip, the display is just kind of blank, nothing's happening. If I go back into there and set that to, let's say, four frame, and now I move this, you can see it's showing me in the middle two frames, what is the beginning and end of the clip I'm dragging. And then the frame before that, it's blank at this point because it's filler. If I drag all the way over here, a shot will show up. It's showing what is the end frame of the shot that's gonna be right before this. So if I'm trying to you know, position this between two things, I can see where's it going, what's happening right before and after. So if that's useful to you, that's kind of a handy one. I'm going to leave mine off. So how do things move when you're doing playback? Does it scroll? Does it wait till the cursor gets to the end of this and then go to the next page and so on? So 
just some display options. The one I wanted to highlight is in the edit section here, and this has to do with how things edit when you're moving them around in the timeline. Uh, default segment tool, these are those two we were looking at, insert and overwrite, which is the default in this case. The one in particular I wanted to point out, because this is one that people will sometimes get screwed up on and not able to figure out where it is, is this one that says segment drag snap. What this is, is this is trying to snap things to the beginning and end of clips. Remember segment drag is the thing I was just showing you where you grab a clip and I'm dragging it around. So right now that is turned off. So I can grab this clip and I can drag it wherever I want. And I can grab this clip and drag it wherever I want and so on. If I turn that on, Now you'll notice it is not letting me just put this wherever I want, it's dragging it to places where there's sort of a logical reason to be there. So start of the sequence, or start of this clip, or where my playhead is, or end of that clip, or start of the next clip, or if I keep dragging it all the way, very end of the movie. So I have all those options. And if I'm trying to rearrange clips or something, this can be handy for you, because that way I don't accidentally end up moving in and I end up with, whoops, there was two frames of a shot left behind here because I didn't actually line it up exactly right. You know, if I did something like this and I tried to move it to the beginning of this shot, but if we actually zoom in here and look like, oops, I left one frame of that other shot there. You can avoid those kind of mistakes. I personally find this more obnoxious than helpful, so I leave it off by default. But the good news is there's a quick keyboard shortcut to temporarily turn it on or off. So you may have noticed, even though I have this turned on right now, what I just did was actually manage to not do that. And I'm kind of, you know, when I was showing, I could leave like a frame of that here. So you can see right now it's not snapping. It's letting me move it freely. And that's holding down the command key. And so when I hold down the command, that temporarily turns that off and allows me to kind of move this wherever I want. I can move it there. And then when I let go of it, now that is back on, you can see it's snapping to the beginning and ends of clips again. The same is true. And this is usually how I default things to, although this is, you know, these are user settings, so do whatever makes sense and is most convenient to you. I usually leave that off so I can move things freely, right? But then if I hold down command, same thing. Now it snaps to, you can see the beginning and end of clips. So whichever mode you're in, holding down the command key is going to switch you to the other. So if like me, you usually leave that off by default, I can hold down command and make things snap. If I have it on, then I can hold down command to allow me to move things completely freely. So back into my timeline, still in the edit tab here. You can see there are other things here. If I hover over these, they'll give you a kind of description of what they are. So like I said, I'm not going through all these, but you can kind of see what they are. This is one that if you do a lot of effects, which I don't, uh, might you might find handy where when you put an effect on something, it's gonna assume you want to open the effect editor and kind of look at what that is doing. So those are a couple of quick tips for the timeline settings. If there's other things that you wanted to know, leave a message and I'll see if I can include them in a later tutorial. Hope this was useful for you. See you next time.